So now we're going to start talking about actually drawing objects. So here we're going to have some real, real world objects, and we're going to draw them. So we're going to you know, figure out what do we want for our views. So here's this piece. So kind of how am I going to break my views up on this? Probably gonna maybe pick this as my front view. Shows a lot about the part. So that's gonna be my front view. So then this will kind of be my side view, my top view. And I'm gonna lay them out and project them like I would, like we've been doing. So I'm gonna draw kind of my fr my front view. Top view. And then side view, right? Kind of like that. But how do I know where that's supposed to go? So how do I know where this line comes from? So I can draw the outsides, right? Pretty easy. But how do I know where that line goes? No, I project it. So I come from here, bring that point down until it goes there. To find where that line goes, I can have my folding plane. See my folding planes there? I can measure that to the outside, that to where that line should go. So I can project this. So I can take this over, measure that, measure that. Get it there. So let's do that. <clears throat> Just gonna leave this here so we can kind of remember what it's like. And we don't need to be exact for this. For, the, for this practice today, we're just gonna kind of guesstimate sizes for it. Yeah. Is the like from measuring down to the uh, folding plane? Is that the same theory as just using your 45 line method? Yeah. Oh. It's just, we're going to do it by measuring because using the, if you know it's done drafting four, usually we'll do that a 45 degree line to transfer it. But that only works from a top to a side. Oh. Once you get other auxiliary views, it doesn't work anymore. No, it <clears throat> and so, since we're going to be going straight to auxiliary views next week, we're going to do it the same way so that we're going to keep using that same process. So we're going to take it. We're going to draw it out and we're going to guesstimate the sizes. Just as long as we're consistent and it stays kind of proportional. That's what I want you to practice. So, to start out, maybe like that, right? So, I'm going to draw this maybe an inch by an inch and a quarter by three inches. So, so, one, one point two five, three, point five. Use my tracking. Kind of get my front view. It's good. Now I need my folding plane, so I'm just going to go in, go to my folding lines. Now I'm just going to draw a couple folding lines in. Does where they are matter? No, because I don't have any other views, right? So I can put them wherever I want. What's going to control is how far apart it is from my current view. Just if I want to move it later, just move it and the other view together. So I can go here and I'm going to draw my side view. So. I'm going to go to my construction layer just to make that current. One way if you want to project a lot of lines in the same direction, you want to know a good way to do that? Construction line. <coughs> so we're going to draw construction line. And I can say H4 horizontal. So 
So I said H for horizontal. Now I can just go bam, bam, bam. Get out of it, get back in. I can say vertical. And bam, bam, bam. Now those lines go forever. So I'm going to work on the top view. So maybe I'll just delete these for now. So I can kind of see what my part will look like. So now I've got kind of these lines. I've got this line, this line, and this line. But I don't have that. So I'm just going to say that's another inch over. I'm just going to offset one inch that over. Right? I'm going to draw a line kind of somewhere up here, went over. I would say this is an inch and a half. Make those all half an inch. Get that right. Line from here, right there, go through. Okay. So I start that. If I want to move that closer, I can just move that down close to the folding line. That's just control how far apart this one is too. Also, right? I'm moving this down. Moving this one closer. Now I can draw my construction lines. XL is the alias. Horizontal. There, there, there. What was the command again? XL. Okay. For construction line. And I can do my offsets from here to the folding line. Folding line out. Here to the folding line. Folding line out. My layer back. Guys, please don't print during while I'm talking. So I kind of just drew on top of my construction lines, deleted wasn't there. How did I know these lines were going to be down here, not up here? Because in this view, those lines are down here, not up here. And if I labeled my points, so I can go through and start labeling these points, A, B, C, D, E, F, and labeling them all. Now I can track where those points are as I'm going. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. If you want it, if that helps you, then go ahead and do it. Okay? So any questions on that one? Now what about something like this? This part. It's not quite as clear cut, right? It's the same basic thing. So how am I going to start on this part? I'm going to draw the outside shape, right? That's a good front view. I can see a good shape for it. it probably sits on something like that. So I'm going to draw that basic shape, and then I can go and find where this line is and just do my projections and things. So let's say that's half inch, one, Yeah, that's good. <laughs> the 
easy way to check for pores is to put it on the screen. Kind of the same distance all the way around. I've got a pretty good proportion on it. Is it the right size? Who knows? I can measure it and see, but we just want to keep it kind of close. <clears throat> now what's the next step? Folding lines. You always want to do your folding lines. Could you do your other views first? You could do one other view first, right? And then draw a folding line in before you do the third view. But usually, do your folding lines before you start making the other views. Just get you in good habits. So then I can draw a line. I'm going to get to just a random point here. What else snap can I use? If I didn't know where I wanted to start, I just, I just know I want to start on that line. Which other snap can I use? No? Which one of those other snaps can I use to just find a, a point that's on that line, but I don't care where it is? Nearest. Nearest. The one I've always told you not to use, right? This is the one time when it's good. I don't know where I want to be on that line. I just know I want to be on that line. So nearest is the good one to use. So you can either go click nearest, or you can just go in and just type NEA if you're a typer. And then you can just pick nearest and start. Oh, I want to start there. Come out here. Go down. Half an inch. Then it's gonna go back 1.5. Then we're gonna come out another half an inch. Then go back to here. And I've got a line there. Alright. So now about that. Now I can bring this point back down to this view. I'm gonna bring a line from this point down. I hit here using my tracking. I could also just draw a line straight down, right, and then find where that point was and trim it. But kind of get used to using your tracking. This happens at the midpoint also. It's now I've got that front view. And I've got a lot of space here. So I'm going to move it up a little bit. You do, once you have two views done, make sure if you move things that you move it up and down. If I wanted to move this more to the right, what would I have to do? Move them both. So pick that one and that one and move them. The things have, if you're going to move one thing, make sure everything else is lined up when it moves also. So now I'm going to my construction line, horizontal, there, there, because it's got a corner, right? It's got a point. And what does that point represent? What does this point right here represent? Let's look at the top view. What does that point represent? It's this whole line, right? This line on the top, this line right here, that's what that point represents. So that's called an end view of, of an edge. Okay. <clears throat> what does this line represent here? The edge view of the plane. Yeah, that's this whole plane, right? We're seeing this whole plane from an edge, so that's an edge view of the plane. Same thing here, right? This front, that's an edge view of this plane. Okay. So let's start thinking about, okay, it's an edge view. I'm not just looking at a line, I'm looking at a plane from the edge. <clears throat> I'm going to pick there, there, offset from there, there, out, from there, there, 
and out, from there to there. If you're looking here, you've got a little rectangle and a big L, right? It's another way you can check stuff. Look at the shapes. Do the shapes match up? Incline. We're going to see the shape of both of them. Alright. Any questions about that? Where, wait, okay, question time. Which view can I measure this line on? I can measure the front. Can I measure it here? Yeah. Alright, I can measure that distance. For the sedge. So let's I'm going to bring this in. Now's the tricky part. I want to move this in. What else do I have to do? I have to move this one in the same amount, right? I can't move it at the same time, so I'm going to have to move that one by itself. So I'm just going to go down one. And bring this one in one also. That's where you kind of want to make sure your space is right before you start making those other views. So let's look at some of these edges. So this edge right there, where can I measure that? That's what I was asking about, right? I can measure it here. In there, right? When, you, when it's there that you can measure it, that's called a true length line. And if you notice, if I want to measure here, it's because th in this view, this one's parallel to the folding line. I can measure it here because this view is parallel to the folding line. Where can I measure that edge? What? Can I measure it in this view? No. But I can measure it here, right? Yeah. I can measure it there. What do you notice here? In this view, it's parallel to the folding line. So that's called, whenever you can measure it, it's a true length line. Okay? So that line is true length. <clears throat> what about this face here? Where can I see the true size of that shape? That that face. In the front view, right? This is the true size of that. Because up here, I can see that whole plane and edge view that's parallel to my folding line. Okay? Where can I see this plane true shape? Can I see it on any of these true shape? True size? No. Why? Well, you can't actually put the top and the front view together. Mm, no? Well, you can figure out what. Yeah, you'd have to do math then. <laughs> this is an anti math class. This is doing everything you can do in math without doing math. That's the whole point of this class. Is to do it, because you can, you can get books on descriptive geometry to do it with calculus. We're doing it graphically. So what would I need to do to find the, the true shape of that surface? I'd have to do another view, right? And how would I make that other view? Yeah, it's called an auxiliary. But yeah, because this, this line right here, right? That's on that plane, and that's on the incline of the plane. And so where do I see this plane as an edge view? 
here, right? I can see that whole plane as an edge. So if I come perpendicular to that and have a folding line here that's parallel, now I can get to an auxiliary view. And that's what we're doing next week. Okay? So see how it kind of goes together?